Oh, welcome back. I've just woken up. <laughs> Pretty stuffed. Um, got changed. Well, I shouldn't say I've just woken up. Got up. I actually just saw my parents off and my dog, Zena. Uh, they were down visiting for Christmas New Year period. Um, <clears throat> and they just headed back to Victoria. I think they're trying to escape the heat. Today's going to be almost 40 degrees. Um, I've got an appointment on and then not much else. So we'll see. Strap in. I know it's very dark in here, but here's everyone's little favourite. Oh, Bella. Poor little old girl. Sometimes it takes a little bit to wake up, but it's definitely her breakfast time. I'm not sure if mum and dad fell on the way up, but at worst, Bella, you might get second. Second breaky. I'm Matt Willie Williams. I partied my way through high school. I joined the army straight out of school as a rifleman. I deployed to Afghanistan for eight and a half months as a crew commander at 20 and turned 21 over there. I've travelled the world twice, jumped from planes, dove under the sea, drank from shoes in over 20 countries, and I regret nothing. Returning home in a regular doctor's checkup, I was diagnosed with incurable, inoperable brain tumour on my 22nd birthday. Since then, I've made it my mission to enjoy my life as much as I can and show that terminal illness doesn't mean your life can't be successful, meaningful, and fucking awesome, whilst putting in as much effort as I can to raising money for brain cancer research. 12 months of chemo done, 60,000 plus donated to research, and I'm fucking happier than ever. This is my story of refining my health and redefining terminal illness and smiling through it all. So I'm getting the house ready for a super hot day. I've still got shit everywhere. I'm not sure, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I had a big uh, Roaring Twenties party for New Year's, as it's 2020 now. Congratulations. Oh, first vlog of the year. Didn't even think of that. First vlog of a decade. So I've still got shit, like I've got these Eskies, which are the, my mates. There's lights up here, which you probably can't see, and all this rubbish. And the bins haven't gone yet, and they were already full staying the party, so it's gonna be like, three weeks so I can actually get the bins out. As you can tell, I've woken up a little bit now. And somehow I've lost in the mix of everything. Ooh, and that thing. I've lost the bags for this croquet set. So I might try and find something because it's gonna be 40 today. So that's 115 Fahrenheit or something. I have no idea. Um, I don't really don't leave too much stuff out. So we'll see. Bella will be locked inside with the aircon on. And I think after I go to this psycho psychiatrist appointment, I think I'll be locked inside doing the exact same. I was planning on taking the mighty Suzuki. This bad girl. Away, and it still will get out, but it's got no aircon, and Adelaide's boiling. But I've also been replacing a few things. I found one in the shed yesterday. This oh, bung right here. Excuse all this. That was missing, so I replaced that. But then I was having a look, just let me move some stuff on the floor, and this is why it's so loud inside. Right there. Oh, it's got a hole through it. So I've had to do a special order of some 40, I think 45 mil bungs to actually get in the floor so I don't just have holes through. Um, new foot mats, that's the newest thing in the car, the foot mats. <laughs> but that thing will get out and it will all be on this channel once we do. So as you can tell, I'm a little bit fresher. Ooh, almost hit that bloody clothesline. A little bit fresher um, for the day. Had a shower, brushed my teeth, everything. Slow wake up, very slow. Um, I think I'm gonna stand out in the sun and dry off a little bit. Seems though, I just checked my phone and it's 9 a.m. and it's like 33 degrees already, so it's bloody hot as hell. Might just cool off, let my hair dry out here. Maybe get a little bit of early tan action off the sun's eyes. Um, before I go to this appointment. It's at a really weird time. It's 11.30 in the city. It's about 45 minutes away. <sighs> really can't be stuffed going. It's a psychiatrist appointment, so semi-important, but we haven't really got anywhere in the last couple of appointments. Well, we have. I've talked about a lot of stuff, but it's not stu uh, stuff I'll talk about with anyone else, too. Um, so I'm not really sure um, where we're going with it, but I'll talk to him today, and I'll, I'll let you guys in on it, and we'll see, see how we go. On my way 
to my uh, psychiatrist appointment. The best thing though about my car at the moment is it's running on well, E85 fuel. Uh, oh god, I can't get this on. Uh, like pre pretty much just on ethanol fuel. So it runs right at the moment, it's got 79% of the fuel is ethanol. Um, the best thing is though, it makes your car smell really nice because it's not like oily smell. You can, you, as soon as you get in my car, you're like, oh, you, 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 it's hard, it's like a hard weed, like flower thing to, so it's hard to explain, but yeah, it smells exactly um, like you'd imagine ethanol would. So as soon as you jump in, it's really noticeable. So I've had to do something I normally wouldn't do. I've parked under a tree, as you can see here. I normally try and stick away from that purely because of the sap of the trees and birds in the trees, when they shit on your car, the sort of acids and whatever in the sap and the shit, really, really bad for your paint. But being, but being 40 something degrees at the moment, well that's what my car said, I figure it's the lesser of two evils to get some, you know, I can always clean the outside, I guess, but the leather and stuff, in the sun to just really dry it out and kill it. So we'll see, I'm not super stoked on it. And plus, there's no parks where I would need to go to my psych or doctor appointment. So, I'm gonna... So I was in, I only just got back in the car, I was in chatting um, to my psychiatrist. Um, and I, it, went, it went well, but I just, I'm in this mix of that I feel like I don't need it. Um, let me just slide this out of gear so I don't bloody roll forward. Um, manuals for real men. Um, it's a weird one because I'm always feeling like, yeah, I'm just rehashing shit I speak about all the time online or on here or anywhere. Um, and he sort of brought up concerns that he's like, yeah, your, your coping mechanisms are really different, but they work, that they're obviously working for you. Um, as far as getting back to work, trying to get back to health and fitness and he said the biggest one that's concerning in a way I guess is he said how hard you are on yourself um, that you have this unconscious feeling that time is ticking so fast for you um, that you seem to be very hard on yourself to get fit very quick or you expected your health to bounce back so quickly for um, goals whether it be you know any goal as far as employment whatever to just happen um, that you expect and if it doesn't happen you blame yourself not the drugs or not what you've been through anything you it's incredibly hard on you it's so hard and you said you're too hard on yourself almost um but if being hard on yourself and striving like that is obviously a working coping mechanism because i've got no you know real problems at the moment i guess with mental health that he said it's working it's obviously working um he said he's really struggling to put the letter back to my doctor but he said you're so quoting me so stoic and sort of um, open that it's really hard um, with someone that's so open that they're not hiding anything and I said this to him that I'm not hiding anything like, the things I talk about in that room with him is the same stuff I talk about every day on my podcast or on Instagram and he said that's very hard because normally we're unlocking something and then how we can work through that where yours is unlocked already to everyone uh, and the things to work through is unworkable almost as far as we can't work through it a bad divorce we can't we wish we could work through your tumor but we can't no doctor can um the the thing that causing all these well not all some issues is from that um that no one can really help it that if the tumor was taken out tomorrow and i was fine then i'd have no on lasting issues um so he's struggling he said to write back to my doctor but he wants to see me um around imaging time because he said that's when people tend with your cases like yours to be the most uh i guess uh, sort of vulnerable is around the imaging uh, the MRIs, different results, whatever um, so post that, post in the week following, whatever, that's when he wants to see me to build more of a case um, and sort of build that letter back to my doctor of what he suggests um, but it's not an easy one um, because I don't think I have really any issues but it needs to be logged um, just in case I do in the future then they can see like a paper trail of what's happening so yeah, I'll think about it more when I get, uh, I've got about 40 minutes to drive home. Um, I guess I'll sort of soak it in there and I'll see what I think. I might do another little check-in, like diary entry, I guess, like this, when I'm back to see how, how I felt I went. There was a cat there. Hello. So, 
my afternoon just changed massively. When I was in Melbourne, for those of you who follow me, um, two weeks ago I was in Melbourne, maybe two or three, uh, me and Ned and Ellie, who were the friends I was there visiting, went and saw a band called um, The Velvet Club. Anyway, they're actually playing tonight in Adelaide at the Exeter Hotel, which I knew. But anyway, they text me like, hey man, can we ask you like the biggest favour ever? Like, feel free to say no, whatever, but just in case you know someone, we've just broken down about an hour and a half out of Adelaide. Um, something flicked up and went through the fuel tank on their newly purchased van for this um, their tour they're doing, like a Mercedes, um, I don't know, whatever the vans are called. Um, we just need to leave it somewhere because we've got all our amps and all our equipment and it's bloody expensive, like thousands of dollars worth. Do you have anywhere we could leave it? And I'm like, boys, come round. This is like, rang them back and I'm like, beers are in the fridge, fucking good to go. Um, so this, and, and the poor lads, it's 40 something degrees here. And out that way, which is out inland a lot, it's probably more like 50 degrees. So the poor lads have been broken down the side of the road. They're about maybe 45 minutes off um, being at my place. Um, and I've got a dinner on and some drinks on tonight, but then 100% I'm going to go to the Exeter Hotel and watch them. I've only met these guys the once at the pub um, playing, but then um, you better go. I'm so happy to help these guys out. Um, and I love coming together of shit like this.